once the recording has started, you are free to go. So that's right now. So feel free. The floor All right. Is Thank you, uh, Elio. Can you can you put it in full screen, Christoph? Is it possible? Presentation uh, should, mode should should be in full screen. Not yet. We we, we still see the we still yes, see your regular screen. I think. Yeah. So just press F five or well, just a moment. This one. Yes. Now okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, All we're right. Set. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. All right. Let's get started. And so, hello, everyone. Um, well, greetings, first of all, from from Belgium. It's sunny here. It's warm. It's even hot today. So, thanks for taking the time still to to join us because I think everywhere around the world these days it's very hot as it seems. So my name is Tom Lores. I'm a solution director at Amplexor. Um, Amplexor, what are we? We are a Valo premium partner, we are a Microsoft Gold partner, and we are mainly active in Western Europe. So Benelux, France, Germany are our typical countries. So today I'm very excited that we can share with you the Valo internet experience of one of our customers, which is Multipharma. Multiforma is a well-known organization, it's a well-known brand name here in Belgium with specific requirements also around our internal communication. Um, so I'm therefore very proud that I can present you to someone who can share first-hand experience, uh, he can share his first-hand best, best practices, because actually he shaped and he led the introduction of the new Valo intranet at Multipharma, and that's Christoph uh, Pelgrims, as you already met today. So Christoph, um, I think the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Tom. So, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us in the Multiforma Internet Business Case. Uh, as Tom said, I'm Christoph Pelgrims. I'm the Internal Communications Manager uh, at Multiformas. And as such, I, at the beginning of, of 2018, I took the lead in renewing the Internet. So, uh, First of all, before I start presenting, uh, I would like to give you a little warning. If you're expecting a slick presentation full of high-end, one-size-fits-all, ready-to-use solutions for designing and implementing intranets, well, I guess I've got bad news for you. Uh, according to my experience, uh, which goes uh, way back, more than 20 years right now, there's no such approach uh, that will guarantee you uh, instant success. Nevertheless, there are a lot of best practices that will help you create uh, an internet that fits the needs of your company and which is even more important of your employees. Well. What to expect then uh, of the next 50 minutes? It's a humble story and a real life business case that uh, will hopefully ring a bell when at some point in the future, uh, you're looking for an approach to tailor your internal communication channels uh, to the needs of your company. So for starters, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Multipharma. So, okay, I can hear you right now. Uh, um, you're thinking, right, there we go for five minutes of free publicity, but before you all decide to head off uh, to the coffee machine or because it's very hot uh, to the fridge, uh, I'd like to point out this is a crucial information to understand the approach and uh, the solution we chose. So please stay seated and let's go. So uh, our, our history dates to a period when healthcare was still in its infancy and a privilege for the wealthy. And at that time, a couple of citizens joined forces and put up uh, a corporation to provide affordable medicines for those in need, which is after 140 years, still our corporate mission. Uh, in more than a century, we have succeeded in becoming the market leader in the Belgian pharmacy market. So nowadays we're counting 263 pharmacies, points of sale, uh, throughout the country and uh, more than 1,500 uh, 1, pharmacists and assistants that are providing pharmaceutical care to more than 1 million customers a year. So 
for those who find it difficult to imagine what I'm talking about, this is what our pharmacies look like. In each pharmacy, you will have one pharmacist manager who is assisted by a team of pharmaceutical assistants and in the big pharmacies, one or more second pharmacist. Teams range from three up to 12 or 15 people. On top of that, Multipharma is a wholesaler uh, of medicines and health products and disposes of, of a top-notch, highly automated distribution center, which was uh, built in 2019. And uh, we count approximately one, uh, 150 employees in central support services at HQ. So, why am I telling this? Well, because it's important to understand the way our internal communication works. For instance, it's important to know that, as in most of the retail companies around the world, the majority of our employees do not have access to a PC or portable with permanent access to intranet and knowledge platforms. So our colleagues in the point of sale have to serve customers although that's what they uh, always state. So time is money and, and I quote, you cannot expect us wasting time on exploring the internet or reading notes. Now, how did we reach our people back in 2018, taken into account that uh, this little fellow, uh, that's supposed to be me, uh, back then, I uh, I was uh, I was the only one and still am the only one um, in the internal communications department. So um, back in 2018, I was a freshman at Multipharma, uh, and I was discovering the company's toolbox, governance, and policies for internal communication. I'll give you a quick summary of what I found out during my investigations. For starters, we had an intranet. This platform was an in-house development, which was implemented somewhere at the beginning of the century. Uh, you could best describe it as a combination of no-nonsense uh, CMS and HTML editor uh, to manage news items on top of a common file share. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot, I nearly forgot, we were able to put things on the right. It took me a while to figure out what that meant, but eventually I understood that you could make news appear on the right side of the screen via some kind of code, uh, and that was to draw attention to them. So, for decades, Information was formatted in Word or PowerPoint, saved as PDF, and shared on the internet. But above all, uh, it was emailed to a wide range of distribution lists. And sometimes, for the very important matters, we even de delivered the paper version via our internal distribution product containers, along with the medicines. So, did I already mention that? On top of that, uh, at least some of us had also access to Office 365 and SharePoint. I have to say we didn't really do anything with them, but we had access. And somewhere well hidden in the basement, there was also a younger community that had been in a coma for a while. So this was our starting point back in 2018. So A, We've got central support services and logistics services, which are desperately seeking to share tons of information with 1,500 employees spread all over the country. We've got uh, 260 some local pharmacies in which it's mostly the pharmacist manager who gets the information most of the time via email and hopefully shares it with his or her team. And we have a prehistoric intranet, but also we have Office 365 and SharePoint functionalities that we don't use in order to take our way to, of working to the next level. So immediate action was needed to get Multipharma into the 21st century of internal communication and knowledge management. So how do you do that? How do you start? Uh, so 
I figured out, first of all, first thing I had to do, uh, I had to figure out what our internal communication channel mix looked like. So I mapped every different channel on a matrix based on its purpose. As our organization structure is, is pretty much top down, our communication style could be described rather as one way with a hint of uh, feedback. So that you see in the upper left, that's what the communication part is, uh, uh, is like. The rest of it is uh, collaboration and social. You, you'll notice uh, I put Yammer for the online session uh, section. Um, this determined what would uh, be the purpose of our future intranet and what it would look like and how it would interact with other communication channels. So the intranet is, uh, is in the, the upper left. For your information, uh, in extension to this, we recently have uh, developed a more complete toolbox matrix that is aligned with the Microsoft uh, philosophy. So we have uh we have evolved but okay back to the situation in the beginning of uh, 2018 so remember we didn't have a real internet or knowledge management platform or governance uh, we could build on and email and file servers were our main tools i believe that uh, from an internal point uh, of view things could look better. But as one of the mo world's most famous soccer player philosophers, Johan Cruyff, uh, once stated, and I quote, every disadvantage has an advantage. Uh, our advantage was that we could start building our intranet from scratch. We didn't have to care about existing rules and structures, and we could implement the latest technology and incorporate the newest insights. And most of all, we could all put this in a multi-pharma mold to make it fit our organization's needs. So what did we want to do and why did we want to do it? Determining the what uh, was quite easy. We wanted to design an internal online communication vision and governance. And most of all, we wanted to replace the current internet by an internal online platform to manage information and communication. So why did we have to do that? Uh, as an internal communication specialist, you can try to convince your management by saying, because, it, because I say so, or because we just have to. But I'm quite sure most of us will have to be a little more persistent, uh, persistent to justify the budget that's needed um, to put up a new intranet. So you're more likely to impress your exec executive committee by referring to mission, vision, and values of your organization to demonstrate the added value of your project. So this is what, what I came up with. Uh, so we had to change our internet to improve customer service, better access to accurate and consistent information by your staff leads uh, to enhanced levels of customer service. By the way, in the meanwhile, we have already proven our added value in this area. Um, during the COVID-19 crisis, our intranet proved crucial in communicating guidelines for the sale and correct use of mouth masks, alcohol gels, and other critical products. And amongst others, we also use our intranet to stimulate uh, advice on so-called related products. This is advice on the most accurate products and practices in function of a certain pathology or therapy. So this is uh, the example, example of uh, what that looks like. And finally, uh, not finally, there's another key argument. Uh, we will be using our intranet to create a solid internal online base for further development and integration of the new way of working and our DNA. And finally, the reference to agility will also be of, uh, of interest. We, be, we wanted to become a more agile organization. So now that we're all into the what and the why, one question remains. How are we going to do that? 
therefore, we used one key principle to, de to determine the way our, we, we conduct our project, and that is business is key. To make sure that we we were going to develop really uh, what what we were going to develop develop really meets the expectations of our users, we had to figure out what those users re exactly were expecting. So before we could start to develop and implement, we had to determine our vision and sorry, we had uh, to determine our vision and our sector. We planned three months. Uh, of in-depth analysis to determine our information classification and architecture, which were followed by four months for the technical development and rollout. So, in the following slides, uh, I will walk you through the most important findings and results of phase one, um, which was uh, the, the determination of our vision and our sector and the information classification. So, first of all, we conducted a survey amongst our employees. Uh, what did they tell us about the internet and online internal communication in 2018? So, first of all, uh, the top five issues uh, that came out of this survey is we had issues uh, in terms of connectivity. People had no access. Uh, there were slow or not working systems. We had tons of passwords for every uh, app uh, or program that we were using. We had a different password uh, and people didn't have access from home. Another issue was traceability of information. It was hard to find uh, accurate information and there was no overview whatsoever. Uh, there was no effective search function and uh, there was uh, no sign of a central knowledge management platform. Everything went by email. Um, we had too many folders and file shares. Uh, on the other side, there was an information blur. So uh, people told us there was too much information. There was an information overload, uh, which uh, has to do with uh, the fact that our information was too fragmented. And um, on the other side, as I pointed out in the beginning, we have to serve customers and have, don't have time to read. On top of that, uh, we had some quality issues. Information was outdated. Uh, we had problems uh, or we had bad translation capacity. Um, my French colleagues uh, found out there was too much English uh, that we used uh, and information was uh, came always too late. So we were very ad hoc. There was also a problem with finding the right people to address your communication, though so we were in desperate need of a who is who, and uh, there were lack of ways to communicate. We also wanted to know what our employees were expecting of an internet in terms of functionalities uh, and content, given the fact we were developing a new internet. So. Uh, I can assure you there were no really big surprises that came out of that. So the top five preferred function functionalities were we wanted a search engine, knowledge sharing, document sharing, e-forms, and sharing interesting external content with others. Top five content expectations were notification in case of IT issues. Uh, which was related at that time uh, to some issues with our cash registration system. We wanted a who is who for finding colleagues. Uh, we wanted access to training facilities. Um, we wanted news about multipharma and uh, the, the, the business, and we wanted to find HR stuff. So next up was a series of five workshops in which we zoomed in on the issues, uh, requirements and needs that came out of the survey. We determined our maturity model. That's a model that allows you to evaluate the current state and compare it with uh, what the ambition of a project should be. 
we set up a high level information classification that showed us in which part of the internet we were supposed to do what. For instance, what do we put on a home page, uh, what in knowledge part and what in separate apps. And we determined which functionalities uh, need to be developed first uh, and how Office 365 could help us with that. Uh, so that seems like quite an effort, but you get a lot in return. So, for instance, at the left, uh, you see uh, the maturity model, and that shows us uh, that there was still quite a bit of progress to be made, and that showed us also that the red line, uh, that colleagues thought we were allowed to be a bit ambitious. At the right hand side, the, you see the, the priority matrix, and that makes clear that there was uh, still a lot of low hanging fruit. Uh, the top right quadrant shows all functionalities with high added value for employees that could be set up quite easily. On top, we uh, so so we used a concept uh, of the information house for our internet and digital, uh, for shaping our internet and, and digital workplace. The information house showed as a blueprint of our future information and document flows. Every room in the house has a different function. Uh, you, you've got the lobby where you can find uh, common information and, give, and that gives access to other rooms. You've got rooms in which you collaborate and other to stock procedures or approved information. Uh, each room you'll notice has also a door. So information and documents can easily travel through the house, across the house. Uh, according to their status. So, for instance, as soon as a draft is approved, it moves from a collaboration room or project to a library section. This exercise also made it clear that our points of sale had different, ex different expectations uh, than our HQ. So for uh, HQ and central services uh, preferred a wide range of information and uh, lots of different functionalities, whereas point of sales employees prefer a quick overview of their task and a good search engine. That's what you see on the photograph in, in red. They want a calendar. They wanted to know when uh, commercial visitors were passing uh, and they wanted a FAQ and a search engine. So in the end, we were able to make uh, a first mock-up. And on that basis, we started the search for a partner for the technical development of our internet. But uh, Tom will explain that more in detail. Yes, thank you, Christoph. Uh, we can immediately move on to the next slide, I guess. Because when, when Multipharma, when I started the search for an implementation partner, well, the first question to answer was for them, do we go for SharePoint with a considerable level of customization or do we go for an internet in a box solution so do we go for an accelerator on top of sharepoint and after first selection phase and an analysis that was available on the internet market well they kept three implementation partners in the final selection process one of those uh, potential partners uh, he offered a custom sharepoint implementation and two of them uh, among us uh, they, we offered uh, a value based intranet uh, proposal. And when the offers were compared, everything pointed in the direction of Falo. So if you go to the next slide, there were different reasons for that. First of all, of course, the ease of use. And that's not only for the end users, because as we saw, there's those pharmacists and sometimes they're not so technically, let's say, mature in what they do, but also for authors, because authors, they are also quite diverse in the context of multipharma, and Christophe will tell you about that in a second. So it was also important for them to easily create uh, content on the platform. The feature set was also, of course, very important because it was broader and more advanced than what could be achieved with the custom implementation, for example, uh, regarding multilingual, which is quite important. Another issue was um, Valos, of course, fully integrated into SharePoint and Office 365. So 
the thing is, you they were not losing anything, so they just got extra functionality for the internet, but they did not lose the standard uh, SharePoint functionality. And also, there was of course a modern SharePoint look and feel that could be kept. And finally, it came of course also down to a budget, to the money. Um, and they noticed that multi-format that would follow. They they got a well-established product, an awarded internet product, which could offer them. Uh, more feature power, also more future proofness and less risks, and even that for a smaller budget than what could be achieved with custom development. So we were, uh, as Amplexo, the lucky ones to partner with Multiforma for the implementation. So what we did is we guided them functionally. So all the requirements they had already collected, we mapped this to the fallow features that were available. We also defined the technical architecture, uh, specifically taking into account that, as uh, Christoph mentioned, they have two languages, but also two different target audiences. So they have HQ on the one hand, they have the pharmacies on the other hand. Uh, and so part of the content is shared between them. But for example, the landing page is, is completely different for those two audiences. Then we went to the typical rollouts, the trainings that we do, and at the moment we are still uh, continuously supporting Multipharma with updates and, and extra functions in the internet. So while we were doing the implementation, there were also parallel initiatives at the Amplex, uh, at the Multipharma side. Sorry. So uh, Christoph, can you tell us what happened at the same time? On your sure, side. sure. <laughs> so while Implexer was working on the technical development, we started internally with a series of workshops to share the uh, to shape our content classification. As I told you, we had to start from scratch. So um, that was our, our 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 advantage, but. It also meant that we had to conduct uh, 27 workshops in which we asked about 50 employees what information and documentation they wanted to put on the internet for their department. So 50 people seems a lot, but considering our key principle uh, that was, was business is key, their input was crucial and moreover this was not without an ulterior motive after all some of those involved were also going to take on the role of content author uh, and as such were going to manage the documents and information of their department as they were about to form our content author community we had every interest involving these people from the very start the result of this exercise was content classification that would determine the structure of the knowledge part of our intranet. All content that was mentioned during the workshops was placed into one of the four main uh, transversal categories. Me as an employee for HR uh, matters, my workplace, products and services and corporate information. We deliberately chose not to apply a subdivision by service. After all, end users do not reason in terms of departments. They start their search from their personal situation and the individual problems. So it's irrelevant which department ultimately provides the answer. Through tagging, um, we and tagging a combination of tagging and search lists uh, which filter and show web pages based on their tags we succeeded in we succeeded in shaping uh, the navigation structure the principle is simple each web page uh, or document gets a tag uh, of the theme or topic it relates to and on the level above it we create a theme or topic web page uh, which contains a search list or more search lists list web parts which uh, lists all web pages that carry a certain tag so each uh, theme or topic web page on its turn can also be tagged and shown in a list on a superior level and so on and so on until the third level underneath the top menu. We also chose uh, those tag is tags in function of the input uh, we received during the 27 workshops. And uh, after this exercise, we ended up with about 200 tags uh, which formed our entire navigation. Okay, 
we are now at the point where we have a working internet that largely meets our functional needs uh, and the well-documented content architecture. All we need to do now is uh, get the content into the intranet. In order to do this quickly and accurately, we have appointed about 30 content authors. Uh, they all are uh, the internal communications POC for their department, and they take care of the creation of news items and knowledge pages and uh, publish documents in the intranet. Uh, because beside the, the content authors, you'll see we have two other types of users. We have visitors, uh, who, as their name points out uh, and suggests, uh, can only visit documents and pages. And we have admins who have all access to all content and uh, administration power. To help visitors find their way on the internet, we developed an online toolbox with how-to videos and a quick start guide. Um, we did it in, this in advance, so it would be ready uh, by the time we would launch our intranet. More important at this point in the process uh, were our content authors. Um, to familiarize them with the tool, uh, structure and the basics, we started uh, with a crash course. And after that, uh, the focus was on, on the job training and coaching. We managed to train all of our content authors well before the go live, uh, which was planned initially beginning in the beginning of 2019. Uh, and after the training, we asked them uh, or we insisted uh, on the fact uh, and, and asked them to make their content available as soon as possible on the new platform on which they agreed. So hooray, we're ready to launch. However, it turned out to be that every advantage also has its disadvantage because when after our rush to the launch, we went to see what was actually on the internet, we found this. So apparently our content authors hadn't uh, heard our call to action or, or worse, they didn't want to contribute to the success of our project. Of our project. So what was happening? None of that uh, it would appear. Um, our community apparently had a hard time translating their daily reality of emails, PDFs, uh, and file servers into concepts like web pages, search lists, document libraries, and e-forms. Which brings me to another quote from my favorite Dutch football player, philosopher Johan Cruyff. Um, you will uh, not see it until you grasp it, or in other words, you're not going to see how it works uh, unless you figured it out. To which I can immediately add uh, that you can't figure it out uh, unless you've seen it work or, or how it works. So in our training, we had uh, overlooked the fact that our content authors also needed a lot of guidance uh, in, in, in the way they uh, had to transform their content into the new platform. They just couldn't imagine the possibilities of the new world we were offering them, and even less did they know uh, how to rework their content. So, we couldn't possibly launch uh, our empty box because we would lose all credit if our visitors would uh, notice that there was no content whatsoever, um, or almost no content. So we, so we started an, an intensive coaching period uh, during which I started working with the best in class to develop and publish a number of interesting sections. The goal was twofold, getting content on the intranet and show other content authors the possibility to and, 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 and inspire them. So after several months of hard work, we managed to deliver a minimum viable product. And after fixing uh, a couple of technical bugs that we had discovered along the way, we were ready to launch on May 15th, 2019. But 
since we were still uh, building our content, we opted for a soft launch. So there was no brass band, there were no fireworks, but there was cake and a few bottles of cava uh, that did the trick. And there was a message on the old internet uh, that referred to the new one, and there was an email, yeah, to what else? <laughs> so there was an email uh, that made everyone aware uh, of the existence uh, and that long wait, awaited new internet was now accessible to everyone. But enough teasing, uh, let's see what multi-net uh, Azure Internet is called looks like. So uh, right now, Tom is going to show you how Amplexer converted our mockup into a value intranet on top of modern SharePoint and Office 365. Okay. Uh, so to be clear, on the right side, you see the mockup. Uh, and on the left side, you see the, the actual intranet in version one. So in the first version of the release um, and all elements could actually be mapped from right to left. So if we start with, for example, the header and the logo, you see there in the mockup, the header with the logo, the navigation, the language switch, the search bar, well, they took up quite some space. Uh, in the actual internet, we decided then to make them smaller, also because Fala allows you to put this logo next to navigation and also to integrate the search bar and language switch in the same region. Quick links are the next one. You see them here on the right. Well, they could be mapped one-on-one -on -one between the mockup and the landing page. So quick links, they often, well, they serve as a quick access to often used applications. And then there were some important day-to-day -day communication messages for the pharmacies. For example, around new items in the product range or around promotional actions. Uh, and they could be made more visual in the actual internet because we could easily add some images there. Uh, on top, there was some more organization-wide news that you can see here. Uh, so on the right, you see the doc image with the general uh, information and um, we put that on the bottom right more in the actual intranet. And you can also see that Multifarnet did not opt for a huge carousel for highlighted news, but for a smaller one that you can see on the top right. There was also room for community building, for knowledge sharing, conversation on the landing page by integrating Yammer feeds that you can see on the bottom left. And a final aspect I want to highlight on the landing page is a more visual region that gives some impressions about live at Multifarma. Uh, for example, pictures of newly opened pharmacies and so on could be shared there. Uh, and you can see there in the middle uh, in our actual internet, that's, that's more like a carousel function. So thank you, Tom. We're nearly at the end of our business case. Um, so to, to conclude, I would like to tell you a few things about post-launch, because as it turns out to be, uh, time and technology uh, never stop. Like every three months, uh, there's a release or an update with a number of new, uh, new or improved features. Uh, and as I told you before, uh, you can't figure out it. Uh, you can't figure it out unless you've seen it. More and more of our content authors are succeeding in creating uh, uh, and reworking existing content, uh, or, or even con even converting it to, uh, with some help, uh, to power apps. In addition, we started uh, working with feedback uh, to uh, better align the navigation structure with reality on the shop floor. For example, the part my workplace changed into our procedures, which uh, is more appealing to our public. And uh, a part uh, our projects was added to give uh, some exposure to, to products, uh, projects that we are uh, conducting in the company. The past year, we also saw a strong improvement of uh, performance, uh, which we applaud. And we also uh, could count on the company's top management to give Multinet a boost uh, by continuing to urge service manager and process owners to centralize information and communication on the intranet. 
and that worked. Our internet is growing. Uh, how do we notice? Uh, first of all, you can uh, take this literally. The number of documents and web pages is, uh, uh, grew strongly. So now we're about uh, at, at, at 2,000 documents that were published and uh, almost 600 uh, web pages in the knowledge part. Uh, news, we have operational news which uh, grows very fastly, uh, 600 some uh, operational news and the more general news uh, is evolving uh, less quickly. We're about uh, 180 messages there. Also, we found out that all of our intended employees came by at least once uh, and a uh, number of visits is growing. But there's more going on. Um, there are the SharePoint statistics. These are the SharePoint statistics from the period just before COVID-19. You will notice that they are quite stable, uh, but there are two ex uh, exceptions. The first one, is a small peak in February uh, following rumors of a merger that would occur uh, but uh, didn't and the second one uh, is, is, is bigger it was at the very start of the COVID-19 pandemic in uh, Belgium during the COVID-19 crisis, the internet played a crucial role in the communication between the central sur uh, support services and logistics services at the one end and our network at the other end. So we noticed this had, uh, has had an impact in terms of consultations. At an equal number of visitors, the number of, oh, the number of consultations uh, a day rose. Uh, these are the figures for the French, French size uh, by about 1,000 a day. Uh, for the Dutch side, it's uh, merely uh, three or four hundred a day. So, uh, internet is growing at Multipharma. So, to conclude this session, uh, I'd like to wrap up uh, what did we learn during the past uh, 50 minutes. The first uh, business is key uh, during and after the project and as well for the information part as for the knowledge management part. Uh, your internet doesn't stand alone and has to fit into your internal communication mix, uh, your knowledge management and corporate toolbox. This part, uh, the IT infrastructure, uh, wasn't really discussed during the case, but it did cause some unpleasant surprises during the project, uh, especially uh, old browser versions and uh, PCs in all imaginable configurations were playing tricks on us. Um, very important is to make concept tangible for your content authors. Remember, you can't figure it out unless you've seen it work. Uh, interesting content and apps generate traffic to uh, and on your site. Uh, permanent coaching of your community is needed uh, either to work on their technical and communication skills as to let them discover surprising and creative solutions for their communications needs. Uh, you don't have to rush. There's no need to install all bells and whistles right away. Provide a good foundation that allows you to evolve when the time is right. And adapt what is not working. If it isn't used or you, you, you see that something isn't used, it's probably not useful. So that's how we got to the end of my story. I hope you've learned something from it and that those insights will come in handy when you are facing the challenge of implementing a new intranet. Um, thank you for, it, uh, for your attention. And if, if I'm not mistaken, Tom, right now there's some room for questions and answers. I think Elio will be moderating them, correct? Yes, Elio? indeed. So if we there still are have uh, five minutes time. So if there are questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or open your mic um, and then start asking. For the people that do not have permissions to chat, 
some people have that just open the mic and ask them so by that i would already like to thank you uh it was a very interesting session you're welcome you're welcome So no questions. So besides drinking kava beer, what was the most <laughs> difficult thing during? Uh, the most difficult thing was uh, the content part. So uh, having people to understand how they could uh, rework things they were doing for decades uh, into a new philosophy of, of, of uh, content management and, and information. And we underestimated that part uh, quite a bit. I can imagine that, yeah, that's something that you have to guess how much work it will cost or you have to mm -hmm. guess how and what you're going to migrate. Yep. But there was no migration whatsoever. So we migrated and we shaped and all was uh, done at the same time because we didn't have anything uh, to migrate or really to migrate. So, uh... I have a question. I saw that part of as part of the internet, people could also have their own profile and update it. How did you get people to actually make that up to date? <laughs> we didn't even uh, get to that part already. So uh, uh, we're shaping our uh, Office 365 uh, environment at this moment. We're implementing Teams. Uh, so with that part, we will also work on uh, your personal profile, uh, which is uh, your Office 365 profile. Um, but we didn't get to that part at this moment. Nobody else that wants to ask something? If not, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>